Hello and thanks for clicking on this link. I'm Andy Stevenson. I've been to three Paralympic Games as a TV producer or radio reporter and I'm attempting to interview 21 Paralympians around the world over the next few weeks. My second guest is five-time para gold medalist in equestrian, Natasha Baker. So Natasha, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm really good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, okay, yeah, very uh, weird times we're living through, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Mad. <laughs> and where, whereabouts are you on lockdown? Who, who are you with? Have you got people around you? So it's me and my fiancé at, at the flat at home. And then I'm really lucky you're still able to visit livestock. So I go down to the yard every day to go and see the horses. Um, I'm spending a lot less time there. And we've come up with like a bit of a timetable because we have liveries. So uh, we have times where it's just myself and my parents and the staff. And then once we've all gone and done our bits, then all of the liveries come down to look after them their own horses so it's working out quite well um, I'm missing not being down there all day every day but you know it's yeah just trying to do the essentials and do what's necessary to to be able to carry on. Is it one of those situations where actually the time you are spending with the horses feels even more precious now? 100% yeah definitely you really value things a lot more don't you now when when you kind of think oh my goodness you know yeah the time is so valuable right now and and actually every minute that you get to spend with them is that bit more special and you can go down to the stables and ride out properly and everything like that or are there kind of restrictions on how far you can go that kind of thing yeah, I mean, obviously, we don't want to put any strain on the NHS. So we're being really cautious about, you know, not doing too much and not doing anything risky. Obviously, doing anything with a horse, there's an element of risk. But there's that when you walk out of your front door and get in a car, isn't there? So, you know, I know my horse really well. And I think it's actually safer to carry on ticking her over. I'm not doing it anywhere near as much work as I normally would be doing with her um, but it's just keeping her sane and safe and doing the kind of bare minimum really. And this is Lottie isn't it the horse? Yes Lottie and yeah you, she's very special. I know obviously you have a, a strong bond with with all the horses you, you you ride but do you get the impression that Lottie knows that something unusual is is going on something different's going on? I think she is blissfully unaware. Um, I think she is loving all of the attention um, because it's much more one-on-one -on -one now, which is lovely. Um, and yeah, she she's just, you know, eating and going out in the field and not having to do so much work. So she's probably quite happy about that as well. Um, but yeah, she I think she's blissfully unaware of everything that's really going on right now, which is probably the best place to be. And are you having to kind of keep yourself sort of personally fit as well as the, you know, the practice with the horse and, and keeping the horses active? Uh, the same is obviously true for humans as well. Yeah, it's been really difficult. Obviously, like I go to strength and conditioning every week and physio every week and I'm not really set up at home to, to exercise quite so much. So it's quite difficult finding inventive ways of keeping fit and I'm doing lots of body weight stuff at home. I really struggled in the first few weeks not having access to physio. Um, that's such an important part of my weekly routine. And so I was really, really aching. Um, um, and so I found this massage gun tool and it's really, really helped me. And, and so I'm feeling much more myself now. So it's enabled me to kind of get back into the strength and conditioning. I did have about 10 days where I was just so achy. I, I couldn't bring myself to even plank for 10 seconds, let alone a minute. So, you know, I, I was uh, I was really, really suffering. But I, I seem to be kind of back on the mend and, and able to do a little bit more now. A 10 second plank is good enough for most people I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know the selection process for the for the para equestrian team is really competitive you know and if the games had had been going ahead in in 2020 I think is it what seven or eight of you have to be whittled down to four you know did you have any yeah. sort of idea before all this happened where you were in that pecking order and how things were looking for you? 
Well, literally, we had one competition this year, um, and it was just before we kind of kicked down into lockdown. So, um, so it's really hard to tell from just one competition. Um, I did really well in that competition. I got my PB on Lottie, um, and there was still plenty of room for improvement. So I was feeling fairly confident. It's, I guess it's actually worked to my favour um postponing for a year because i've only had lottie for a year and 2019 i focused more on getting to know her doing lots of able-bodied classes and so i only really started doing para classes with her in i think it was october last year so i'm still quite fresh into my para career with her so having an extra 12 months is a massive advantage for me so that that's quite i guess uh, good in my circumstances I know it's not working out for uh, for a few others but you know I think with equestrianism the more you get to know the horse the better partnership you have with them you know you're more likely to have success so yeah it, it's definitely worked to my advantage but I have no idea it, it's so hard to tell and there's a lot of um, para riders that have got new horses some young horses um, so I, I think it was too early to tell we needed a few more competitions to see where it was going to go but I was feeling good and I was feeling confident so. And is it too soon to tell kind of how next year's schedule will be sort of shape up because presumably things that might have happened this year will be shifted to next year and things like that not not <laughs> obviously <laughs> Paralympics but sort of smaller events beforehand and things like that training camps perhaps we're, we're quite lucky in the fact that we're very uh, into a routine so most of the competitions happen on a yearly basis they're on the same weekend or the same week every single year so you kind of get to know your competition schedule on a yearly basis and so basically everything that we've planned in 2020 will pretty much just jump to 2021 and um, so from that aspect it should be quite easy to really plan for next year and um, we just don't know obviously when we're going to be able to get started again this year and uh, we've got an international in July I can't see that going ahead and um, there's another one in October so we're kind of aiming towards that and um, normally we give the horses a bit of downtime over the winter but I think most of us are thinking of giving them the downtime now and then once we get started carry on all the way through to Tokyo and um, so it's just kind of changing those plans around a little bit more this year um, and that's what's so unexpected and, and, you know, we just don't know whether we're coming or going yet. Um, so it would be really good to kind of have a bit of an end goal. But at, at the end, you know, there's kind of no light at the end of the tunnel at the moment, is there? We don't really know when this is all going to be over. So we're just kind of ticking along and, and trying to, to keep as fit as possible um, and in work a little bit. And I'm sure you've uh, been joining in with the, the clapping for the NHS and things like that, because there's a, I've got a sense that kind of, uh, and particularly for somebody like you who who had pretty you know dangerous situation when you were when you were very young, is there a kind of innate gratitude towards the NHS there anyway in, in you? Yeah, massively. I spent so much time in hospital as a young child and, and still do. So, you know, the, the work that they're doing is just tremendous and, you know, putting themselves in risk every single day you know none of us can thank them enough and so yeah every thursday eight o'clock we're out on our balcony with saucepans and wooden spoons and clapping and cheering and yeah you know i i, I think it's so important that you know they they get the thanks that they deserve and you know it's it's i actually was pretty much crying the first time it happened i just i just thought it was so beautiful that so many people were, were so thankful for everything and it was so nice to see the community really come together. And how else are you filling your time then? So all this extra time you have where you normally would have been down with the horses, what's, what's the Natasha Baker guide to surviving <laughs> the lockdown? What are you, what are you I've been, reading or? 
<laughs> I've been doing quite a bit of baking uh, with mixed results. <laughs> um, you'd think with my surname that I would be a pro, but I'm definitely not. Um, so I've been doing a bit of baking. Um, not quite so good for the waistline, so I've had to mix it up with a few salads for dinner. Um, we've been doing lots of tidying of the flat. It's kind of all those things that you say, oh, I'll do that when I've got time. And now we literally have no excuse because we've got all of the time in the world. So uh, we've been doing lots of cleaning, lots of organising. I bought loads of um, like little boxes the other day to sort everything out into cupboards and everything. So we're going to have the most organised flat ever. Um, don't know how long it will stay like that after this. Um, so, yeah, we've been doing lots of that. Um, I've been doing Facebook live sessions as well and um, I started doing just like a random Q&A session for everybody and it went on for like an hour I had so much interest and you know I can talk anyway um, quite a lot so uh, so yeah that went down really well and I thought well I may as well carry that on so I've decided to do uh, themed talks every single week so I do them at seven o'clock every Monday um, for mostly for equestrians but anybody can tune in and I did one on sponsorship so you know how I've gone around getting sponsors and um, how to approach them that kind of thing and the same with owners so looking for owners for horses um, I've done one yesterday on what it's like to be part of the world-class squad and what the funding means to us. Um, I did one on my training routine and finding a new horse. So that's been really good. And I've got such great feedback from that. And, you know, if I can pass on some of my experience and some of my knowledge to some up and coming riders, then that's all well and good. It's all about sharing that, isn't it, at these times. So, and it kills some time time as well I, I really enjoy doing it so that's been really really good and catching up on emails you know all the general stuff but actually the first I think the first five days went a little bit slow and I, I think I was just trying to find my feet find my routine um, but the rest of it's gone so quickly I, I it's I just don't know where the time's gone which is good you're gonna do a bake along you should do a bake along Facebook. I should do a bake along. It's your showstopper dish. Leave us with sort of something to go and make us feel hungry now. That's a good idea. So I've been doing, we, we've bought a lot of bananas and some of them went um, a little bit overripe. So I did a banana cake, which was really good. Um, and then I've just kind of been using what's left over in the cupboard. So I did um, some cookies with some strawberries in. They were really delicious, actually. Um, and then I made some flapjack the other day with some golden syrup in. That was quite naughty, but nice. Um, so yeah, I, I've been fairly adventurous and our, our neighbour's been making stuff as well. So we've been leaving stuff outside each other's doors so we can uh, we can try each other's baking. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> it sounds like you're filling the time uh, ably. And uh, well, thank yeah. you for sparing the time to chat to me now and um, no worries. best of luck keeping fit best of luck with that massage gun <laughs> oh thank you it's so brutal the first time i used it i was so bruised so i've taken it a bit easy since but actually it's it's really helped so that's good <laughs> thanks very much natasha thanks so much andy